here's, here's a hypothesis. You know that girls without fathers hit puberty one year earlier, eh? That's a real biological mystery, but here's a hypothesis. So imagine that you're bereft of male companionship and productivity and protection. And maybe that's because your culture doesn't have enough men. Sometimes that happens after wars, for example. Or maybe you're just in an economic niche or a social niche where you're unfortunate, you know, so. Now, why would you develop a year early from a puberty perspective? Well, an answer is well, one of the ways that women can attract male attention, obviously, and therefore, in principle, companionship, protection, productivity, all of that, that, that might come along with a real relationship is by being sexually attractive and available. And so if there's a dearth of males in the local environment, then early puberty could easily be a way of uh, increasing the probability of catching a mate early enough so you don't starve to death, let's say. Okay, so then imagine that there's a psychological equivalent to that. And this is where that waif-like femme fatale archetype might kick in. And so if you're appealingly, vulnerably, beautiful and available, and then you have that, that magic that, goes, that can go along with that when it's transformed into something truly archetypal, which Marilyn did extraordinarily well. You know, there's a bit of a little girl about her. She had a very girly voice and that's how she sang. And she had a, a kind of innocent, naive provocativeness that was amplified paradoxically by her overt sexuality. And so she had some of the appeal of a helpless child and some of the appeal of a, a truly mature woman. And that's a pretty, that can be a very deadly combination. And I think the fact that it's a deadly combination is also a kind of adaptation. So you can imagine that girls who are abused might turn to that, that pattern of seductive, uh, behavior because it's they can, if they turn on the charm full throttle in that manner it increases the probability that even in their desperate economic straits they might be able to attract a male and of course with Marilyn that was elevated right to the point where she became literally the poster girl for that approach you know and then I mentioned Madonna a little earlier and when Madonna first came on the scene I thought she's kind of interesting she seems to be taking this Marilyn-like archetype, but toying with it consciously. You know, she was a businesswoman, pretty canny. She seemed to be in charge of her own image, you know? And I thought maybe she had a grip on the archetype, but it isn't obvious to me at all that she did, you know? I, Madonna's life has been characterized by a continual pattern of sexual attention-seeking. And she's also I would say, turned into her own parody, even in her, I think she's in her late 60s now, if I remember correctly. She's still doing, essentially, she's still doing photo shoots that are leveraging pornographic attractiveness. And that, I mean, that requires a lot of maintenance and makeup by the time you're at her stage of life. But it doesn't really look to me like it's aged particularly well. And that's the problem with short-term mating strategy is that it's not a good iterating game. You can't play it with other people continually. You have to have multiple partners. And it's not a good pattern for your whole life course. That's partly what makes it both immoral and unwise. Is yes. It just doesn't work across the decades that you're going to be alive. Yeah, yeah, well, I think, I think, that's, I think that's right. So what we have is the domination you talk, you basically laid out a three-part archetype. And it's it's an archetype of transformation, you know. And I've talked to some pretty bright women on my podcast, and a number of them have commented that as they progress along their careers and their as they accrue productive status, so let's say as mothers and matriarchs, they don't necessarily um, attain a commensurate status, particularly among young women, interestingly enough. 
And maybe that's because the women are competing. You know, I suppose a woman can be attractive as a mother and a matriarch. And so the maidens might take exception to that because it, it's a form of competition. But I do think too that our culture hyper values the maiden image, especially when that's allied with, uh, it's not virginal maiden that's exactly, exactly uh, held up as an icon. You know, even though people like Madonna will play with the idea of virginity as something attractive, it's only there as a sexual magnet and it's only there tongue in cheek in some real sense. And then our culture, because it's a consumer culture and also because, you know, it concentrates on teenagers a lot because they have, they have disposable income and it's really the case that our culture became consumerist oriented when teenagers started to develop disposable income. It's not surprising at all that the consumer market tilts towards the maiden archetype because that's where there's spare money to be vacuumed up. So that's sort of a perfect storm in some sense. And so, but yeah, so our, 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 our developing hypothesis here in the podcast, and obviously you've thought this through to a great degree, is that part of the reason that the sexual revolution claiming absolute sexual freedom is pathological is because, well, it enables the male exploiters, but, and that's not good at all, but it also isn't a good medium to long-term game. Well, I would say either for women or men. I mean, if, if you develop a long-term partner in a woman and you're a man, you might want a woman who has enough sense to move from maiden to mother to matriarch and to do that in a, manner that facilitates the, uh, you know, the development of the relationship across time. You know, and maybe, I wonder too, if a woman who does that really well is as she progresses across that three-part track, also to some degree integrates the previous stages as she moves forward. You know, because it might be the case that if you're a successful matriarch, maybe that's at the point where you become a grandmother, something like that, that you've also integrated mother and even maiden and are still capable of playing those roles when that's appropriate, but are no longer only limited to them. And I'm not saying that's an easy thing to pull off because, you know, it's not that hard to be, it's not that easy to be, you know, outstandingly sexually attractive, male or female, by the time you're in your 60s, let's say, gets to be, you know, old age is fighting against that pretty hard, but that doesn't mean that that can't be held forward as, uh, you know, an unattainable ideal to which we all might strive or at least hope might make itself manifest. And I think that's actually, I think that's actually a possibility, you know, that you can, you can move towards something like a full integration.